Hi, my dear Astro family. Today, I want to be speaking to you about the upcoming solar eclipse, which is going to be taking place on the 25th of October, and it's going to be on two degree of Scorpio. Now, this is a busy eclipse, by the way, because it's going to be highlighting Venus, Jupiter, Uranus as well. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas about some of the fixed stars, what might be important. So stay tuned till the very end. Now, uh, an eclipse can be felt one month before and it can last up to 18 months. Now, most people say that uh, it lasts for six months. I don't necessarily agree with that because if you have got a eclipse happening on a certain point, 18 months later, that point gets triggered by a, a full moon, new moon, eclipse, whatever it is. So therefore, it can really uh, uh, can be fed for about 18 months. So eclipse is something which people were very afraid of in ancient times. Uh, because it's kind of like the, the 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 sun or the moon is kind of like eaten away in a sense. So they tend uh, they were kind of hiding around those times. But anyway, solar eclipses are always about intensity, and especially in the sign of Scorpio. Now, it is highlighting Venus because Venus is so close. It's all it's on the same degree anyway, just a couple of seconds away from the solar eclipse. So what is Venus? Venus is about how we are transforming our own value system, how you manage your financials, how much money uh, do you earn and how much money controls you. Uh, so surely in the sign of Scorpio, uh, the solar eclipse will be highlighting anything to do with the banking, the money flow, how much money we are pr pr uh, printing, but also something to do with the currencies. Now, surely Scorpio is about secrets, so we should be expecting some secrets to be revealed around financials, money, beauty, uh, peace, harmony, and war also. Now, the last time we had a solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio around the same, actually around the same degree, and it was also aligned with Venus as well, that was in 2014, 25th of October. So on one hand, you're going to have to think about what was going on in your life in 2014, October, plus minus, you know, Maybe a one, one, one month before, and maybe you want to be adding a, a couple of like six months uh, on top of that. So till about 2015, uh, April, what was going on in your life? Because that might be giving you an idea of what you are meant to be letting go. Maybe you started something around that time. And this time around, you are meant to be letting that go. Or you were just thinking about something and now you are meant to be actually focusing on that a lot more. But let's have a look at some of the keywords for Scorpio. So it talks about banking, secret, intimacy, control, power, how much you share things with others and how much they share with you too. I tend to call um, Scorpio as a shared karma. Shared karma in a sense when we get married, obviously, kind of like imagine karma being a straw, and then two different straws, a new straw is kind of getting attached to your family karma. So therefore, some energies are kind of flowing into. That's why actually Scorpio rules anything to do with energy healing as well. Um, it kind of really depends on, of course, what energy you put into your body and so forth. Now, overall, the eclipses, I mean, a solar eclipse, which is always talking about a new moon, it's actually talking about new beginnings. But the fact it's an eclipse, it's kind of like a big new moon, right? So it really talks about big new beginnings. But because it happens in the sign of Scorpio, it's something we must start inside. We need to do a purification, a cleansing, so that not just the body, you know, goes through a renewal, but it always starts within us. And that's going to be one of the key success factors to this um, solar eclipse. Of course, it might uh, 
stir up some extreme emotions. Um, it is said that um, around eclipses, it's very hard to sleep, so it can cause insomnia. Um, most likely because we have got a tendency to worry quite a lot. There is so much uh, emotions on our mind. We don't know how to deal with them. We might feel betrayed or we might be afraid of losing out on something or losing someone <laughs> or even losing your possessions because um, it is Venus, right? Which is tightly conjuncting the solar eclipse. And that talks about your money, uh, your loved ones and so forth. So this solar eclipse is inviting you to expose your weaknesses a little bit. But apart from that, Scorpio does talk about tax, mortgage and loan, the banking system overall. So I I would be expecting some huge changes. Most likely the investment portfolio is going to go down big time. Um, therefore, it's going to be a good time to invest. Now, let me just mention, actually, a financial tip for uh, my viewers. And I would like to point out that I am not a financial expert, okay? I am just interested in it from a astrological perspective. And I am kind of certain that next year the gold is going to be extremely strong. Uh, and I also believe that uh, next month, kind of gold should be dropping. So basically what I'm kind of trying to say here is that if the gold is actually dropping next month, I would be expecting a huge peak next year summer for the gold just in case someone wants to invest into those type of things. Why I think that? On one hand, 31st of October, Mars will be retrograde. And on top of that, it's out of bound as well. Now, uh, basically, since the great financial crisis, Mars um, has been retrograde seven times. And on each each time there was uh, some issue with the stock market and um, kind of like, yeah, a, a big deep. Sometimes it might have just, you know, been a few days. Sometimes it was a few weeks. I think one occasion, actually, it was a couple of months also. But we should remember that this is something to do with... Um, you know, opportunity to invest into things. Obviously, there is this highlight from the eclipse also, because the ruler of the eclipse is going to be Mars. Uh, so, you know, you might want to be uh, careful with that. Now, or mindful. Now, in 2007, Mars was also retrograde, uh, in Gemini, and that was one of the greatest falls when it comes to some of the financial investments. So be care be mindful about it. Now, as I mentioned, in 2014 October, we had an eclipse also in conjunction to Venus. And at that time, the gold price was extremely uh, good. Uh, and kind of like, as far as I remember, it has never returned uh, to that price. So I believe that there is going to be very good uh, energies of the gold coming up next month. Most likely, you know, cryptos are going to be also good, you know, but... Um, for some reason, I see just great stuff around, around, um, you know, gold, basically. That's the bottom line. Now, 
obviously it's always good to look at what happens before the eclipse season in the uh, in the one month before period because we can start feeling that and of course if you look at what was going on then the sterling uh had a little bit of i mean a huge issue actually especially it kind of happened around when mercury went retrograde then also, uh, obviously, the prime minister resigned, which I had a very strong feeling about, and I did make a video about that previously. If someone is um, uh, curious about that, how I kind of felt that um, uh, there's going to be some issues there. So we should be expecting something around uh, currencies, certain type of currencies will be dropping significantly. And so that's the taxes, mortgage and the loan type of side of things. Now, this eclipse always happens on the south node. Sorry, the eclipses always happen on the south node or the north node ends. OK, this one is going to be happening on the south node. So thinking about what south node is, it's about release, adjustments, letting go, not necessarily being in our comfort zone. I also find it extremely interesting, and I'm going to make a separate video about this, but uh, what I'm expecting is that the European, the euro, basically, the currency will be dropping because it's going to be happening, this eclipse is going to be happening on the IC of the EU. Uh, now, I know that the IC has nothing to do with uh, financials, but it's more likely about lands or sharing lands with others. At the same time, it kind of can talk about kind of like the neighborhood as well and as the nation itself. So there could be some issues around that. Kind of like my prediction is that uh, I think eventually EU might be giving up one of their territories or someone is going to get out of the EU again. They're going to be announcing that in the next 18 months, obviously it's going to take ages, but something like that uh, I'm expecting. This is also reinforced with the Uranus and Saturn ongoing square, which is hitting the EU's rising sign for quite, almost for a couple of years now. And we are in the final hooray. So I think the border of the EU might be changing. But on a personal level, some of the questions which come up here, what are you keeping to yourself? What are your secrets which you actually need to let go of? Are you in a toxic situations? Who is the toxic person who surrounds you or toxic situation anyway? Do you have any crisis situations you must face rather than hiding away? Who do you trust and who don't you trust? Do you actually listen to your gut feelings? Do you have some hidden money? And uh, and uh, what do you want to do with that hidden money? Do you have some money put aside, which actually you can utilize maybe for investments also? I think uh, kind of loads of people are going to start thinking about insurance, maybe life insurance, because at the end of the day, Scorpio is about death, right? So, or even it kind of, to a certain extent, can represent your old age as well. So we want to be making sure that we've got something to put on the table at an old age. And also, are you afraid of death? Now, you know, I'd like also to point out that uh, Scorpio, I don't think it's always literally the death, okay? It's more about the mortality and kind of like realizing that, you know what, uh, we only have got one life, we haven't done what we are uh, meant to be doing, you know, so that's why it's kind of like a spiritual sign as well at the same time, because life is too short, so that's the type of death, what we are talking about here. Obviously, that Venus, which is very close by to this eclipse, which is about currencies, as I said, I think it should be a huge topic. Most likely, uh, banks will try to rectify the currency issues, maybe by printing out more money. 
Also on a personal level, it could indicate uh, who is jealous of you or are you jealous of someone? Are you trying to uh, control the uncontrollable? Can you actually see other people's values? Now, obviously Venus being so tight to this eclipse, which is the dispositor of Uranus, yeah, which is in the sign of Taurus. So the currencies, the banking is also there. This, this could indicate that a new currency is on the horizon and which is going to be changing the banking system uh, quite significantly. Maybe it's a technological advancement, you know, but something is in the pot. It's being cooked now. Also, this Uranus has got a quindicele aspect to this new moon. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had a presentation about Queen de Cella, uh, which is a 165 degree aspect. And um, I'm not always a huge fan of minor aspects, but this one I particularly like. One of the reasons is because I do have four of them in my chart. And this is the uh, aspect of obsession and compulsion. Now, there is a slight difference between them two, but this is talking about repetitive uh, behavior, for instance, kind of like, um, yeah, repetitive behavior. Like, I feel that I must wash my hands all the time, for instance. Or, you know, or I only can touch the door handle with a tissue because I don't want to be getting any type of illnesses and all those type of things. Obviously, these are always originated from some trauma. So the Queen de Chela, 165 degree aspect, you can, I think you can choose this aspect on astro.com if you are curious about how many you have. Uh, it is always indication of trauma as well. Um, yeah, so we can become very obsessed with our financials. Basically, that's the bottom line here. Kind of what came to my mind was the 1929-1930 period when people were keeping their money uh, underneath their pillow. I am going to be talking about that uh, era uh, in, uh, in my free of charge webinar in regards to Jupiter in Taurus. Because Jupiter and uh, North Node made its last conjunction in 1929 in the last in the sign of Taurus. So there is going to be a repetition going on there. But Uranus brings in sudden changes, or we can become obsessed by making a huge change in our life. And sometimes it comes with sudden decisions also, which we might regret. So I think during this eclipse, you're going to have to focus on what can you be passionate about? Are you obsessed with technology? Are you being fanatic about investments? And this is one of the reasons why I don't like talking about investments because people can be very passionate about it. And if there is a little bit of a negative news, they don't react to it too well. Oh, because you don't want us to be happy and all those type of stuff. But this is kind of like out of our hand, right? Scorpio, we cannot control. So ask yourself the question, what is out of control in your life? Where is a little bit of a chaos with that Uranus as well so that you can tidy that up a little bit? Maybe you're just going to have to do some intense research about something. Also, <laughs> what are you addicted to? Now, previous times... 25th of October 2014, and one before was October 21st, 1994. So uh, check out those two periods, what was going on in your life. There could be slight repetitions there. Now, also, I find it interesting that moon is almost on its fall degree. So this is a very weak moon, by the way. The fall degree of the moon is three degrees of Scorpio. The exalted degree of the moon is three degree of Taurus. So I kind of believe that this moon is insatiably hungry here. People are hungry. And this could talk about in a literal sense, but also it could talk about just being very greedy. 
the fear of starvation, kind of like it's a, I either kill or I am going to get killed. It's the all or nothing type of feeling what this new moon has to it. Most likely the transformation is going to be a huge topic around this Scorpio theme. As I said, death and rebirth, uh, emotionally leaving something behind. Another huge keyword for Scorpio is wealth. So sometimes it talks about loads of money or how much you value your own money, how to make your life better. Uh, oh, by the way, another thing which I would like to mention, very important. This eclipse is going to be visible in most part of Europe. Actually, it will run through Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan. Also, it's going to be affecting the western part of Asia, China, Thailand, uh, and Pakistan also. Now, uh, two other countries, which is Italy and Switzerland, will be quite impacted. So I'm not going to explain how to see that. It can be checked by astrocartography as well as uh, um, uh, some other techniques. But uh, whenever, whenever an eclipse is kind of impact a country, they are kind of like double focus for us. What I'm expecting with that Mars retrograde in Gemini, which is really about war talks, I think there is going to be some talk uh, between neighboring countries because it's Gemini as well, which really talks about the neighborhood. So the neighboring countries sharing territories, war for territories. Unfortunately, I kind of see something like that. Um, also, it could really talk about the death of your relationship, it coming to an end. But also on a higher note or side, Venus in Scorpio is about craving for a deep, honest relationship. <laughs> when there is a crisis situation then this venus wants you know different type of healings happening psychologically or you know emotional healing techniques it wants to find a resolution for it of course this could talk about sexual relationships also it's kind of like the animalistic side of venus in a sense but we want to be blending our soul with others. Also, Venus is extremely artistic, right? So this could really talk about the changes around how art, you know, going to play out maybe in the next 18 months and so forth. Also, Venus is the planet of money and it's in the sign of wealth in a sense because Scorpio talks about loads of money, okay? So it's either getting rich or getting very poor. And this is going to be a huge topic. Another thing which I wanted to mention, because there is kind of like this strong quincunx happening between the eclipse and Jupiter. And Jupiter wants you to be brave, wants you to be adventurous. And Jupiter is on the world axis. It's on zero degree of Aries. So basically the whole world is impacted by this eclipse. That's the bottom line. <laughs> uh, Jupiter is the planet of knowledge. So most likely we're going to get some very interesting news, most likely in the next six months. From a Saros family point of view, this one belongs to the six south. Very interesting that this is a, a time when the the Nazis came to power in 1932, uh, when we had a very similar eclipse happening here. So most likely someone will rise to power. I also checked the asteroids and uh, Amor, which is uh, which astrological number is one two two one. If you want to be checking that out, it recently changed sign. It's on zero degree of Scorpio. Now, 
this is an asteroid which rules romance. Amor, or uh, in Greek mythology, this, this would be Eros, can show what you need to this uh, or what you need to display romance and affection, but also how you would like to get that affection. Typically, it's about craving for passionate and sexual chemistry. Uh, it could talk about actually walking away from a partner uh, because we kind of feel like we are not a match or we are insanely a match. It could talk about choosing an, a toxic person over a nice person because we just need that intensity in our uh, life. By the way, Eros uh, has got a two and a half year orbital period. It's only one kilometer in diameter, so it's kind of like a small one. It is associated also with loneliness and the anger of being rejected. So most likely, you know, I can imagine a situation when we go to the altar and then kind of like there is a runaway bride type of situation. Lula, Mars, I did talk about that a little bit, but that's stationary. That planet is three times stronger now. So there is going to be very loud words coming out of certain countries, but also mouth, but also pay attention to because you can become a lot louder as well. I think this eclipse will uh, play a huge role sometimes in between January and April next year. Mars will have a square to Neptune three times. Um, so it's about blurriness. It's about feeling lost. It's about feeling tired as well of making necessary changes in our life. And also Pluto has got a Queen Kongs to Mars too, which is also talking about that war talk. So has it finished? Most likely, unfortunately, I must say not yet. Guys, very briefly, this is my interpretation on the upcoming eclipse. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did so, please, please press like. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.